This is our 7 inch uh, Comco Cadet label press. And we have here, like any web fed press, an unwind section with the web brake. I have a little bit of tension on the paper here. This is my web guide box that I just talked about last lecture. And here I have a pneumatic sensor that is partially covered by the paper web at the moment. When I stipulate that the paper web covers the sensor, it steers the bottom two <coughs> rollers to go more into the press. So I'm simulating that the web wanders out and it tries to steer it back. So once again, you see this down here. These rollers here are movable. These ones are stationary. Then we have our four printing stations <coughs> with a hot air drying tunnel and then it goes to the next print station. The Anilox rollers are spinning constantly, especially when you have ink in them, of course, you know that makes sense because you want the Anilox roller to be wet and no ink has a chance to dry up and plug up the cells. There's with a thousand line screens and the BCM volume between 1.78 and 1.82, that's not a major difference. It's a minor variation. So after our four print stations, we print also from light to dark. So the sequence is yellow, magenta, cyan, and then black. Then I have here the possibility to, to, to do two die cutting actions if necessary. Then I can slit the web here and wind it up on two different rolls. And if I have die cutting happening here, I have to remove the matrix and wind it up on this roll up here. I show you now two different uh, dies. Labels here, this side label, so I can get two out of here. And then we also have a flexible die. It's just a thin metal plate. Of course, it's much cheaper to manufacture than a permanent die. The permanent die lasts longer. So if you have this repeatedly, this type of job, you would have a permanent die. If it's you know a very short run, you can use this flexible die and it's held by strong magnets in place. 